In this nugget, we'll be looking at the atom economy in chemical reactions. Many of the materials and products you use every day, such as medicines, plastic and ink, are made using chemical reactions. Manufacturers of these chemicals want to make their products as efficiently as possible. This means making as much product as quickly as possible without costing too much money or making a lot of waste. Chemical engineers design these factories to make sure they work as efficiently as possible. This makes sure that the manufacturer can make money, but limits the impact on the environment. They need to make sure the working environment is safe, uses as little energy as possible, makes lots of product to sell, reduces the pollution and impact on the environment, and uses as little of the reactants as possible. Resources are often finite and will run out one day, so it's important that we use as little of the reactants as possible. If we made 40 grams of chemical C when we were expecting 50 grams, we can calculate the percentage yield. The percentage yield tells us how much product we actually made compared to the amount of product we calculated would be made. Chemical engineers want to make sure that the reactions have a high percentage yield, but they also calculate something else called the atom economy. The atom economy tells us how many atoms from the reactants end up in the product that we want. We can calculate it by working out the relative formula mass of the product that we want, divide it by the total relative formula mass of the reactants, and then multiply it by 100. This will give a percentage. Let's quickly recap how to calculate relative formula masses in equations before we move on to atom economy. Relative formula mass is the sum of the atomic masses of atoms in a compound. In a hydrogen molecule, there are two hydrogen atoms, each with an atomic mass of 1, so the relative formula mass is 1 plus 1, which is 2. We have two hydrogen molecules though, so the mass of the hydrogen before the reaction is 2 times 2, which is 4. In an oxygen molecule, there are two oxygen atoms, each with an atomic mass of 16. So the relative formula mass is two lots of 16, which is 32. This means that before the reaction, the mass of oxygen is 32. And in total, the mass before the reaction is 4 plus 32, which is 36. Now we can calculate the mass after the reaction. In water, there are two hydrogen molecules, each with an atomic mass of 1 and one oxygen atom with an atomic mass of 16. So the relative formula mass is 1 plus 1 plus 16, which is 18. But we have two water molecules on this side of the reaction. So we need to times that 18 by 2. And that gives us 36. As you can see, the mass before the reaction is 36, and the mass of the reaction after is 36. The total relative formula mass of the reactants always equals the total relative formula mass of the products. Some reactions have a 100% atom economy. For example, here is a reaction that makes a compound called ammonia. Large amounts of ammonia are made all over the world as it is used in lots of different ways. One way is for fertilizer for plants. This reaction is reversible, but chemical engineers can get around this by removing the product quickly and putting any unreacted or reformed reactants back into the reaction vessel straight away. In this example, you can clearly see that all of the atoms before are in the product that we want. This is because we only have one product, ammonia. Lots of reactions make more than one product though, and in these cases the atom economy won't be 100%. Here we have a reaction between solid copper oxide and aqueous sulfuric acid. This will make aqueous copper sulfate and liquid water. You may have carried out this reaction yourself. Evaporation or crystallisation can be used to make blue copper sulfate crystals. Here is how to calculate the atom economy. This question says calculate the percentage atom economy of this reaction. Give your answer to two significant figures. You will need to check a periodic table for the atomic masses, but I've included them here on the slide for ease. So first of all, we need our equation. So the atom economy is the relative formula mass of the product that we want 
divided by the total relative formula mass of the reactants times 100. So, the product that we want is copper sulphate. We're going to make those blue crystals. To calculate the relative formula mass of copper sulphate, we would add the mass of copper to the mass of sulphur to the mass of four oxygens. So that is 63.5 added to 32 added to 16 times 4. And the total for that is 159.5. So the relative formula mass of copper sulphate is 159.5. Now we need to calculate the total relative formula mass of the reactants. So the reactants are copper oxide and sulfuric acid. So the relative formula mass of copper oxide is one copper added to one oxygen. So that's 63.5 added to 16, which equals 79.5. The relative formula mass of sulfuric acid is slightly more complicated to calculate. We have two hydrogens and we have four oxygens. So we need to add one times two to 32 and add that to 16 times four. This is 98 in total. So the relative formula mass of sulfuric acid is 98. We need the total relative formula mass of the reactants. So we need to add the relative formula mass of the copper oxide to the relative formula mass of the sulfuric acid. So that is 79.5 added to 98, and that equals 177.5. Now we can calculate the atom economy. The atom economy is 159.5 which is the relative formula mass of the product that we wanted, the copper sulphate, divided by 177.5. That's the total relative formula mass of the reactants. And then we times that by 100 to calculate a percentage. As you can see, we get rather a long number, 89.85915 and on. The question has asked us to give our answer to two significant figures, so we need to round this up. So the answer is 90%. The atom economy of this particular reaction is 90%. To summarise, the percentage yield tells us how much product we actually made compared to the amount of product we calculated would be made. Atom economy tells us how many atoms from the reactants end up in the product that we want. Wasteful processes have low atom economies. A high atom economy is important for the environment and for sustainable production as they don't use as many natural resources and they create less waste. Keywords Reactants The starting substances in a chemical reaction Products The substances formed in a chemical reaction Yield The amount of product made Reversible reaction A reaction where the products can react together to reform the reactants. Fertilizer a chemical which is added to soil to improve its nutrient content. Conservation of mass. The mass of the products in a chemical reaction equals the mass of the reactants.